Large, plush SUV motoring suits hybrid technology perfectly, but only Lexus has bought us a package that delivers running costs low enough and a driving experience desirable enough to make the whole concept really worth considering. In the RX 450H, the Japanese brand showcases a decade of experience with petrol electric power plants, and with this smarter, sharper, revised version, has polished the package still further. If ever a category of car cried out for a more efficient means of forward motion, it's the luxury SUV. For most of us, a car of this kind is only viable to run when equipped with a diesel power plant, and even that attracts quite a running cost penalty. You'd expect then that by now, hybrid engines would be common in this segment. They're not, and it's still only Lexus that can provide one with running cost returns that really do offer a significant advantage over diesel power. In this car, the RX 450H. Since 2005, the brand has been largely unchallenged in offering customers hybrid power in this sector, first with the RX 400H and since 2009 with this pokier but more efficient RX 450H model. Lexus though is well aware that the competition is about to get a lot tougher as rivals finally get their act together. Hence the need for the far-reaching package of improvements introduced to RX450H buyers in the autumn of 2012. Supposedly sportier, certainly more luxurious, even better looking and offering the same astonishing super mini star running costs as before, this more than ever is the thinking person's luxury SUV. Let's check it out. So what's it like? Well, you get in, luxuriate in the beautiful leather seats and enjoy the commanding SUV style driving position before pressing the starter button to be greeted by nothing. The engine's running all right, it's just that at this point, it's doing so under battery power alone. If you've a gentle right foot, that's all it will continue to use at speeds of up to 30 miles an hour before the 3.5 litre V6 petrol engine cuts in, controlled via a six-speed CVT automatic gearbox. But before we go any further, time perhaps for a recap on hybrid technology. In case you're unfamiliar with it, this is essentially a method of power that uses a combination of an internal combustion engine and electric motors. The petrol unit in question is the 246 brake horsepower 3.5 litre V6 I just mentioned and it's helped in this case by two electric motors, one on the front axle, one at the rear. The front axle motor drives the front wheels and puts out 167 brake horsepower and uh, the one at the rear, the motor at the rear contributes a further 67 brake horsepower and is thus able, if somewhat nominally, to make this Lexus into a four-wheel drive car, albeit one with a very pronounced frontward power bias. Like all Lexus and Toyota hybrids, the car can be driven under electric power only, as it usually will be from start off for up to 1.2 miles, under engine power only if you're using full throttle, or more usually with a combination of the two. When you're braking or when you're cruising, uh, the motors switch to becoming uh, high output generators, recovering kinetic energy that can then be used to charge the batteries for the next time the hybrid system wants to use uh, electric only motion. It all sounds very promising, especially if you make the mistake of assuming that the total amount of power that this car can transmit to the tarmac is the engine's BHP return added to the figures achieved by the two electric motors. According to the Japanese engineers, it's not quite as simple as that, but Lexus does quote a combined total 295 brake horsepower output. Now, while this isn't enough to push this RX into the league of the quickest V8 petrol luxury SUVs, it is sufficient to get it from rest to 60 in 7.8 seconds on the way to a top speed of 124 miles an hour, which is pretty rapid for a vehicle of this Lexus's size and weight. Refinement is outstanding, even when the engine's running, but then RXs were always quiet. 
especially of course when being driven solely by their electric motors. Something which, provided the batteries are fully charged, you can, as I alluded to earlier, uh, do for up to 1.2 miles by pressing this EV button down here in the centre console. Now, uh, this is one of four driving modes on offer. The others being Eco, which tweaks the drive system for more fuel efficient progress. Snow, which aids you when pulling away on a slippery surface. Or, and this is fresh for this facelifted RX 450H, Sport. You can see why Lexus engineers felt they needed to add such a setting. After all, this car has never been seen as a particularly dynamic choice in this segment, and it still isn't. But at least selecting this sport mode via this drive select button here on the steering wheel makes your progress feel a bit less lethargic. It also changes the dash display background colour from blue to red. True, ultimate grip is still unremarkable and the electric power steering system still lacks feel, but at least response from the helm is a little more immediate and the car responds more instantly to the throttle as the VDIM Vehicle Dynamics Integrated Management Setup controls and distributes power around the complex drive system. The sport setting also programs the vehicle stability and traction control systems for less intrusive operation. If you want to go further, then there's the option of choosing the more dynamic F-Sport variant that I'm trying here with its neat lateral damping system. It's supposed to uh, improve stability and enhance corner turning. And it does make a difference, but at the expense of the kind of firmer ride that many typical RX customers simply won't want. Ultimately, this Lexus is never really going to be a rival for more dynamically orientated segment competitors like BMW's X5. Its priorities really lie elsewhere. But what the latest engineering and handling changes can do is to make this into a car that you'd feel more confident in when you're late for a business meeting, say with a cross-country trip to complete, especially if you're in the top version with its electronically controlled air suspension. This is the variant to choose in the very unlikely event that you'll be taking to the forest tracks in your RX 450H. Uh, thanks to the fact that one of the air suspension systems for selectable ride height settings lifts you a bit further from the ground. In standard form, this car sits only 175 millimetres from the dirt. For the record, there's hill start assist and a, uh, an approach angle of around 29 degrees to get you up steep slopes and a departure angle of around 25 degrees to help you when you come down the other side. But of course, this isn't really any kind of off-roader. In fact, most of the time, the car won't even be running in four-wheel drive, with the second electric motor that you'll find on the rear axle only pressed into service when a lack of traction makes it absolutely necessary. It's all done in the name of efficiency, of course, as almost everything about this car is. You wouldn't mistake this RX for a fully-fledged mud-plugging SUV, but it does have a classic crossover look with pronounced wheel arches that flow seamlessly into both bumpers and doors. Distinctive side window mouldings adopt the arrowhead shape that hallmarks the Japanese maker's l finesse styling approach and uh, the kink at the bottom of the rear doors that draws your eye to the hybrid badge is a neat aesthetic touch. As before, the bodywork is class-leadingly slippery. Brand followers will recognise this improved version by its smarter front end, incorporating the spindle-shaped arrangement for the upper and lower front grilles. That's a central element in current Lexus design. The uh, lighting is revised too, front and rear, with the blue tinting that marks out Lexus hybrid models. This F-Sport model goes a stage further still, with a deeper, more vertical front bumper and a mesh treatment for the front grille. At the wheel, owners familiar with the original RX 450H model will find fewer changes to catch the eye, with the dashboard divided, as before, into upper and lower zones. 
Higher up, the emphasis is on a 8-inch color LCD screen, one of the functions of which is this fascinating energy monitor, showing at any given time what's being driven by or powered by what. Now, you can access this energy section, or indeed any of the other functions of the infotainment setup, by using this remote touch mouse style controller uh, that's uh, available on all but the entry level variant and has been simplified for use in this revised model. Through the lovely leather stitched wheel, you glimpse instruments that have a beautifully choreographed lighting sequence as you enter and exit the car. The left hand dial, as usual with Lexus hybrids, being a hybrid indicator rather than a rev counter, encouraging the driver to keep the needle in the blue charge and eco segments rather than the white power section just above. Um, as ever, with Lexus, it's the little touches that really impress you as well, like the dual speed electric windows that slow at the beginning and the end of their opening and closing sequence so as to reduce noise and vibration in the cabin when you're on the move. And as ever, build quality is irreproachable, though the use of some Toyota switch gear for those electric windows, for example, does lower the tone slightly. As usual in the rear, two passengers will be very comfortable, but three will need to be on friendly terms. Now, the bench conceals the battery packs that drive the hybrid system, but that doesn't stop it from being extremely flexible. It uh, slides backwards and forwards so that you can prioritize either legroom or rear luggage space, and it can recline for greater comfort on longer journeys. Out back, the 496 litre boot isn't especially big by class standards, so BMW X5 will give you 120 litres more. But with all those batteries having to be stored somewhere, I was expecting a lot worse. The top air suspended model even has a button on the uh, low bay wall so that you can lower the uh, ride height for easier loading. If you're not using the rear bench, you can of course flatten it using these convenient levers on the luggage bay wall. At this point, you'll find that the backrest actually splits 40, 20, 40 to perfectly suit the kind of luggage and passenger combo that you have in mind. With everything flat, the total luggage space is 1,760 litres. List pricing suggests that you're going to be paying somewhere between 45 and 55,000 pounds for your RX 450H. At the time of the launch of this facelifted version, the only hybrid alternatives in this segment were versions of the Porsche Cayenne and Volkswagen Touareg, both requiring a 60,000 pound budget and using a far more powerful and thirstier and dirtier 333 brake horsepower 3 litre petrol V6. The reality then is that potential RX450H customers are really going to be considering this car against rival luxury SUV diesel alternatives, all of which will cost the business buyer substantially more to run because of CO2 returns that, depending on model, are between 20 and 40% dirtier. Probably the best rival of the bunch is this one the Mercedes ML250 CDI Bluetech, which can at least match this Lexus's 44.8 miles to the gallon combined cycle fuel return, even if it's slower and puts out another 20 grams per kilometre of CO2. The other obvious luxury SUV diesel rival in this segment, BMW's X5 xDrive 30D, uh, though it can match this Lexus's pace, can get nowhere near its running cost figures. A comment that also applies to other potential contenders, cars like the Porsche Cayenne diesel and 245 PS 3 litre TDI versions of the Volkswagen Touareg and the Audi Q7. As for a 3 litre V6 TD Range Rover Sport, well, you'll need around £50,000 for one of those and a deep pocket to fund its very expensive running cost figures. True, there are cheaper options you could consider. You'd be looking at a price list saving of around £7,000 if you went for something like a Land Rover Discovery 4 or a Jeep Grand Cherokee. 
but then you'd eat into that saving pretty quickly, given that both of these contenders will take you around 13 fewer miles on every gallon and will belch out over 50% more CO2 from their smoky exhausts. If, having considered all of that, you decide that it is an RX 450H that you really want, then your remaining choices aren't too onerous, given that this design comes only in petrol-electric hybrid form with the same combined 295 brake horsepower uh, hybrid drive system output, whichever variant you select. Uh, the SE model is a starting point with a premium of £4,000 on top of that if you want the luxury spec variant with its satellite navigation and a further £3,500 to find on top of the cost of that car if you want to graduate up to the F-Sport model that I've been trying here with its sharper driving responses and neat head-up display. To fully experience everything that this RX has to offer though, you'll need to uh, find a budget of just over £55,000 and get yourself the top of the line Premier variant, the only RX 450H with the availability of air suspension and the car fitted with the 15 speaker Mark Levinson surround sound stereo system that Lexus people love so much. All RX models are pretty well equipped mind you as long as you can overlook the lack of satellite navigation in the entry-level version and the fact that a DAB digital radio is only standard on the plushest versions. Other than that, the uh, standard tally is pretty comprehensive, including many items that would cost you extra on rival German models. Expect to find alloy wheels, high-intensity discharge headlamps, auto wipers, a rear parking monitor, leather upholstery, heated and powered seats, dual zone climate control, cruise control, Bluetooth connectivity and a nine speaker um, sound system with a six disc CD auto changer. As for safety, well unfortunately the really clever high tech is limited to the top of the range premier model and even then it's only optional. This includes a radar controlled PCS pre-crash safety system that's able to uh, scan the road ahead for potential collisions and take action if you don't respond. It also includes an ACC active cruise control system that is able to keep you a safe distance from the car ahead on the highway. Beyond this though, it's difficult to grumble because standard safety provision across the range really is very complete as well as anti-whiplash front head restraints, Isofix child seat fastenings, an impact absorbing bonnet and collapsible pedals, there are no fewer than 10 airbags, including knee bags for both front seat passengers. With TCS traction control and VSC vehicle stability control built into the vehicle dynamics integrated management system, hopefully you'll never have to use them. Probably my favorite feature though is the AFS adaptive forward lighting system, which is able to think ahead as you're driving around a curve, thinking three seconds ahead in fact, to adjust the lateral aim of the headlamps accordingly. Time to readjust your thinking. Here apparently is a big petrol powered planet polluting 300 brake horsepower luxury SUV weighing nearly two and a half tons. Next to it is an economical little 1.6 litre, 105 brake horsepower petrol powered super mini. One gets you Greenpeace hate mail, the other nearly qualifies you for Friends of the Earth membership. So what if I was to tell you that both of these vehicles uh, record nearly identical combined cycle fuel consumption figures? And more importantly, from a taxation point of view, their CO2 returns are almost the same too. Your first reaction to that might be to wonder whether super minis have got a lot thirstier and dirtier since last you looked. But no, this one records around 45 miles to the gallon on the combined cycle and puts out no more than around 140 grams per kilometre of CO2, as does this RX 450H. Shocking? Yes, isn't it? But then that's hybrid technology for you. While other manufacturers are still experimenting with it, Lexus has more than a decade of experience with petrol electric motors. A period in which the company's engineers have significantly improved the efficiency of their hybrid drive system. Just as well, 
for if this car could still only offer the running cost returns of the original RX400H of 2005, it would today be lagging behind rival luxury SUV diesel models. Just as hybrid versions of the Volkswagen Touareg and the Porsche Cayenne are actually slightly thirstier and dirtier than their diesel equivalents. Now, there isn't a diesel equivalent in the RX range, but this Lexus does have plenty of diesel luxury SUV competitors, all of which tend to put out CO2 figures of somewhere between 190 and 230 grams per kilometre and record combined cycle fuel returns that hover just under the 40 miles per gallon mark. Judged in that light, the returns on offer from this RX 450H 44.8 miles to the gallon on the combined cycle and 145 grams per kilometre of CO2 look very good indeed. The world's lowest from a premium large SUV. In fact, only one diesel alternative in this segment can get close to this kind of showing. The Mercedes ML250 CDI Bluetech uh, actually matching this Lexus's fuel figure but its performance is much more leisurely and it still puts out 20 grams per kilometre more of CO2. And it's that CO2 figure that will really matter when it comes to the bottom line figure on your tax return. Of course, much of the time, when you're sitting at a traffic crossing, for example, with the engine seamlessly disabled and battery power in motion, you won't be emitting any CO2 at all. Plus, it helps in this respect that cold weather operational efficiency has been improved by 30%. Now, this means that uh, whereas before with this model, on a chilly morning like I had today, the drive unit would have defaulted straight to the petrol engine on startup, now it will be far more likely to revert to the preferable electric drive unit um, so that you can glide seamlessly and quietly out into the traffic, perhaps monitoring the hybrid system's cleverness on the energy displays you'll find both between the dashboard instrument dials and on the centre console screen. Electric only use doesn't just eliminate CO2 dirtiness, it also gets rid of uh, many NOx emissions too, green friendliness that today's government wants to incentivise. As a result, Lexus reckons that ownership of this car could save higher rate taxpayers up to £9,732 a year, judged against some less efficient luxury SUV rivals. And the companies they work for will benefit from a handy 20% write-down allowance against tax. All of this, of course, is based on official figures that assume a fair degree of driving restraint. Certainly, to get anywhere near the 40 miles to the gallon mark in day-to-day -day use of this car, you'll need to drive with one careful eye on the hybrid system indicator that replaces the usual rev counter on the dash, keeping the needle as often as possible in the blue eco and charge zones. What else? Well, it is a pity that owners no longer qualify for free congestion charging, that servicing is as frequent as every 10,000 miles, and that insurance groupings are up in the 40 to 42 bracket. But servicing costs are actually lower than with some rivals that you'll save when it comes to buying your next annual tax disc, and crucially, residual values are up amongst the strongest in the class. Now, this isn't the most capable luxury SUV on the market. It isn't the sportiest to drive, and it's not the most affordable to buy. But despite all of that, it's the only one that an increasing number of well-heeled buyers can justify owning. Once you've bought the thing, after all, its running cost returns are hugely less than even the most frugal of its diesel competitors. While other manufacturers dithered over hybrid technology, Toyota's Lexus division got on and developed it. Their very first hybrid RX model was an impressive achievement, and this one adds a significantly improved driving experience to existing strengths of comfort, refinement, and a high specification. This improved version has a smarter look and a slightly more dynamic edge, but the reasons you'll want to buy one really haven't changed very much. Quite simply, it's the only car of this kind you can drive with a clear green conscience. And that's something it's hard to put a price on.